Good morning. I'm Dr. Archana Sashdev, Principal Scientist at the Division of Biochemistry, Indian Agricultural Research Institute, Delhi. Today I'm going to talk about active site mapping. In today's lecture, we will focus on understanding what is active site mapping and what are the various methods used for active site mapping. This slide shows the concept map that will be followed in this lecture. We will first study what the enzyme active sites are and what we understand by active site mapping. Then we will briefly look at the areas where active site mapping holds importance. In the last section, we will study some of the common methods used for active site mapping. The active site is the part of an enzyme that directly binds to a substrate and carries out the reaction. It contains amino acids that promote formation and degradation of bonds. The amino acid residues are called the catalytic groups. Active sites are formed when the tertiary structure of a protein form the pockets or clefts where the ligand or potential molecules or small atoms can bind to the protein molecule. It is important to note that only molecules with appropriate shape and appropriate groups can bind to the active sites of a protein molecule. Figure 1 shows the mechanism of action that involves conversion of a substrate to its product upon being catalyzed by an enzyme. Active site mapping refers to the identification of catalytic residues involved in the active site. The relevance and the applications of active site mapping are outlined below. Active site mapping often plays an important role in contributing to the understanding of the mechanism of how enzymes perform biocatalysis. Again, understanding the structure and exploiting the function of proteins or enzyme active sites. The information obtained from active site mapping also finds importance in the identification of the location of any potential allosteric binding site. Active site mapping can also help support the design of new drugs such as enzyme inhibitors. In the next few slides, we'll focus on the methods used for active site mapping. A number of methods have been used for active site mapping. The earliest methods for prediction of catalytic residues and active sites involved detecting conservation patterns across a family, information sought from solved 3D structures, analysis of geometric arrangement of residues, surface geometry, electrostatics, energetics, and chemical properties. Other methods combined features derived from sequence and structure. Few and important methods are discussed below. Now we will look at the following methods used for active site mapping. Chemical modification, site-directed mutagenesis, peptide mapping of active site, X-ray crystallography, 3D structure analysis, sequence alignment, computational methods, statistical methods, and bioinformatic tools. This approach involves the chemical modification of amino acid. There may be one or more compounds available which can react and modify the chemically active moiety of the amino acid involved in catalytic residue, thereby preventing its involvement in catalysis. For example, if active site of an enzyme has tyrosine involved, the compound tetranitromethane will react with the phenol group of tyrosine, thus nitrating it. Thus, if the enzyme is inactivated by tetranitromethane treatment, this suggests that it may have tyrosine as a catalytic residue. However, this may also imply that tyrosine may be involved in substrate binding or it may lie closer to the active site. Affinity labeling is a more specific chemical modification method which involves attaching a chemically reactive group to a substrate analog. This substrate analog is bound in the active site and then chemically modifies a residue at the active site physically blocking catalysis. Site-directed mutagenesis is one of the most commonly used means of testing whether a residue plays a role in catalysis or not. STM involves mutation of a single residue in the enzyme to decipher the effect of this mutation on enzyme function. When a residue is involved in active site, 
in the catalysis, the mutation should affect the rate of catalysis. Peptide mapping technique is used for protein identification. In this approach, proteins are chemically or enzymatically treated which results in peptide fragment formation. The peptides are then separated and identified by mass spectrophotometry to obtain peptide mass fingerprints. Peptide mapping approach is also used for the identification of amino acid residues in the enzyme active site. In X-ray crystallography, the protein is purified and then crystallized. It is then treated to X-ray beams. These crystallized proteins are analyzed to get the distribution of electrons and proteins by diffracting the X-ray beams into one or another characteristic pattern of spots. The distribution of electrons so obtained gives a map of electron density which can then be interpreted to determine the location of each and every atom. 3D structural analysis. Once the three-dimensional structural information is available, a detailed examination of the active site region helps in identification of amino acid residues at the active site. Identification of active site amino acid residues can also be based on sequence alignment. Sequences aligned within a homology group are analyzed for conserved acidic residues that are predicted to be located in the catalytic residues. The next few slides will focus on some of the computational methods, statistical methods and some bioinformatic approaches which can be used for active site mapping. Computational methods are gaining more and more importance as a tool for identifying enzyme active sites. A number of computational methods are employed for detecting the active sites in enzymes. A few among them are SABA, that is selection of active binding sites for enzyme redesign, which is a computational method for identifying active sites for new reactions. Gas or genetic active site search for identifying enzyme active sites with genetic algorithms is also a very popular one. CLASP, that is catalytic active site prediction, is a tool that detects active sites based on structural and electrostatic conformity. Statistical methods such as discern methodology for catalytic residue prediction predicts catalytic residues based on a set of sequence and structural features that describe a site. Bioinformatic tools such as active site prediction or protein server compute the cavities in a given protein. Apart from the above, there are many sources that store structural and sequence information about proteins with known active sites such as catalytic site atlas, PDB fun, PDB site and pro site. CPAS, which is the comparison of protein active site structures, is a modern database technology which allows detailed comparison of active sites. One of the most extensively investigated enzyme is chymotrypsin, a proteolytic enzyme. The active site of enzyme has two interesting structural features and these include a hydrophobic pocket which can accommodate the aromatic amino acids and a catalytic triad which consists of side chains of residues serine at 195, histidine at 57 and aspartate at 102 position. During the reaction, the hydrogen bonding network between these three residue form causes deprotonation of serine at the 195 position. The nucleophilic alkoxide anion then attacks the carbonyl carbon in the peptide bond. To summarize the whole lecture, we can say that an active site is the part of an enzyme that directly binds to a substrate and carries out the reaction. It contains amino acids that promotes formation and degradation of the bond. The amino acid residues are called the catalytic groups. Active site mapping refers to the identification of catalytic residues involved in the active site. A number of methods have been used for active site mapping. These include chemical modification, affinity labeling, site-directed mutagenesis, X-ray crystallography, 
3D structure analysis, sequence alignment, computational methods, statistical methods and bioinformatic tools. So we can say that in this lecture we have studied the concept of active site mapping. As the terminology suggests, this involves the identification of catalytic residues involved at the active site and active site mapping plays a very important role in contributing in a major way to the understanding of the mechanism of how these enzymes perform biocatalysis. Thank you.